Hello everybody, this is Carmen Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 7th C++ tutorial. And in this tutorial, we'll be making a text game and using what we learned in practice to help you understand it. But before we get into that, you probably notice that some things have changed. First of all, and probably the most noticeable, I, oh, I'm using Visual Studio 2013 instead of Visual Studio 2012. Uh, it's available now, it came out. If you have Windows 8, you can get it, but it's not supported on Windows 7, so... That's unfortunate, but I also, pr you probably noticed, updated to Windows 8. You can see by the Start Menu thing here. And uh, if you have Windows 7 and you don't care about getting Visual Studio 2013, just stay with Windows 7. Uh, Windows 7 is better, but Windows 8 is not all that bad. Also, if you notice any kind of quality, video quality or audio quality changes, then tell me in the comments because the recording software I use to record, Camp Studio, it was updated so I reinstalled it. Uh, not all my settings are the same, I couldn't remember exactly what they were, and I also had to reinstall it because it's on Windows 8. So tell me if there are any kind of video or audio quality changes and if you want me to change them back. So now that that's over with, let's get on to the tutorial. Alright, so I've included all the files we need, we just need IO stream and string and I created the main function with return zero and before we get into the text game there is one thing that I haven't taught you yet but it's not a big enough topic that it warrants its own tutorial so let's just get into this now so we'll create an int call it x just do this very quickly and now we type in cin sin and this is the way you get user input from the console in C++. So now you do sin and you do uh, greater than signs instead of with count less than signs. We use greater than signs and then type in the variable and it should, oh wait we need standard. Standard sin and then we'll do standard count x standard end line and we'll build this again. So now you see it's not outputting anything and it's asking us to put in a number. So we'll put in seven, hit enter. It took in seven and it output it, put seven. So that's what the sin stream does. Uh, think of these as, for count and sin, think of these as funnels because with count you're funneling this and this into count and then count outputs to the screen and with sin, you're outputting the input into a variable. And then here we output that variable to a screen. So that's just a quick thing, getting input for the screen from the console. We'll need that in this tutorial. All right, so the first thing we're going to do in this game is ask the user to enter their name. So we'll create a string to hold the name. So string name. And then we'll do standard count enter your name that's not his full name and we don't need an end line yet so enter your name and then we'll get input for the name so standard sin name so now we've created a variable to store the name ask the user to enter their name and now we get their name so now let's just do standard count and two backslash ends. I think I've taught you what backslash end does. If I haven't, it goes to a new line just like standard end line. And I use two here so that we skip a line between this and the next block of text. So let's build this and enter your name. Ian, that's my name. And press any key to continue. Alright, so the plot of this text game is going to be that we're traveling into a dungeon with some fellow adventurers to find some loot. It's a pretty cliche bad example, but uh, I'm bad at writing stories and um, it's the easiest way I could think of to go over everything we've learned in the past tutorials in one small text game. Also you'll notice that I added using namespace std and removed the standard colon colon prefixes in front of all these. Don't get used to using this, but you can do this. Just type in using namespace std under the includes, and then you don't need to put the standard colon colon in front of string, count, endline, and sin. Don't get used to using this. It's 
bad programming practice, but since we're using count and sin so much, we can do this, and in actual, like, games or real applications, you won't be using sin and count very much, if at all. So, just don't get used to using this. So, what we have to do now is we're going to create an array of travelers that will be traveling with you. So, we'll do string um, travelers and make an array. Uh, we'll make it of size 3. So, now 4. We're going to do a for loop so that we can name the travelers. 4 int i equals 0 i is less than 3, yes, less than 3, i plus plus, and we'll do count, enter the name of trav, traveler, and then put i here, and then we'll just do this and then we'll do travelers at position i or no we do sin and then travelers at position i so what we're doing here is we're asking for asking the user to enter the name of the traveler at position i in the array and then we get the input and put it into position i of the array. So now we do this, enter your name, Ian, enter the name of, oh, just to make it more user friendly because you'd say traveler 1, traveler 2, traveler 3, not traveler 0, traveler 1, traveler 2. So enter your name, Ian, enter the name of traveler 1, Bob, Jack, I don't know, and Phil. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have the traveler enter the dungeon and come to a fork in the road. So there was a lot of typing, so I just paused the video and typed that in so that you wouldn't have to watch me silently type. So now let's create an int called choice. Actually, let's create a char called choice. Char choice and we'll do sin choice so we used a char because I said path A or B I could have done one two and used an int but I just kinda wanna show you that you can use sin with chars too so now now let's do an if statement you may have guessed what, that we do this so we'll say if choice is equal to A then we will do something and else if choice is equal to B then we will do something else and finally else we will just do standard count invalid choice I forgot to put a string there. I also don't need standard. I always forget that I don't need that now. Just delete that there. Count invalid choice and end line. And actually, uh, we don't need to learn about game loops yet, so I'll teach you something simpler instead return 1. So now if you enter an invalid choice, return 1 just makes the program stop. And if you were actually getting the return value of this function, 0 would mean that it was successful, and 1 would mean that there was an error. So you'll use this in more advanced programming, but for now, this just stops the program here. So if you accidentally enter C, it will stop the program, but I don't think we need to go through the whole process of a game loop. That's a much more advanced topic. So um, I'm going to pause the video again, and I'm going to 
just put the typing in for these because it's going to be a lot of typing and you probably don't want to see me just spend like two minutes typing silently. So see you in a second. All right, so I've done all the typing and this will be the end of the text game. So you can either go through choice A and you're, you go through the first path and find yourself in an open room. You are attacked by a group of bandits. You are all killed. So then you die. You lose. Uh, or you go through the second path and find yourself in a small room with a large chest in the back corner. The chest is full of gold. You win. Or you can enter the wrong choice and the program will end. So let's build it. And enter your name. Ian. Enter the name of Traveler1. Bob. Jack. Phil. We'll use the same names. Doesn't matter. Uh. Hmm. That's kind of ugly. So let's just change this. We'll put a backslash in here. Just because it uh, cuts off in the console. So enter your name, Ian. Traveler1 is Bob. Uh, Jack and Phil. So you and your fellow travelers enter the dungeon and immediately come to a fork in the path. Do you want to go through path A or B? You say A. You go through the first path. Bleh. You go through the first path and find yourself in an open room. You are attacked by a group of bandits. You are all killed. And we do this again. It's just too lazy. <laughs> you and your and just put in B. You go through the second path and find yourself in a small room with a large chest in the back corner. The chest is full of gold. You win. So as you can see there, if we put in A, it goes to the first. It goes to the first scenario. If we put in B, it goes to the second scenario. And if we put in, if we put in C or anything, invalid choice, and the program would end. We actually don't really need to return one because the program ends anyway. So this is about all we've gone through in the tutorial so far. Uh, we didn't go over the string library because there's really no useful way to implement it in s simple programs like this, but. We probably won't get back to the string library for a long time until we get to reading from files, which eh, may not be too far away, but it's a decent ways away. But uh, you've made your first game with this. Um, these tutorials have probably taken you an hour at most, and you're already creating games with what you've learned. So give yourself a pat on the back with that one. So that's all for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial, we will finally get to functions. I've mention them a lot and we can finally learn what they are. So see you in the next tutorial.